some thoughts as I sip on my tea this morning. I've um, recently encountered a few people who are really in a financial dire straits, really struggling financially, like 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 stuck, and and not knowing how you know how to get themselves out of that. And they these people are all responding in different ways. Um, uh, so so I mean I don't have great life changing answers, but I have some thoughts that might be might be interesting that might be useful if you or someone you know is really stuck with with the financial thing. The first thought is that there's a there's an imaginary line. Let's call it the poverty line. Um, there's an imaginary line that separates humanity into two separate groups, almost like they're two separate species. Below this line, you 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 really don't have what you need. Um, you really are financially distressed. Um, you don't know where your next meal was is going to come from, or you're in a position where you're on your way towards that. Um, so money and 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 thoughts about money are, are going to um, really fill your mind. You're really going to be worried about money, worried about not having enough. Above that line, you have people who are everything from, you know, just doing okay, right the way up to the billionaires, because um, it's all just a matter then of how much, you know, like like everybody above that line would would like to have or to buy or to invest or to do something with money that they don't have right now. I mean, um, multi-billionaires might be thinking, you know, if I, if I just had a, another few hundred billion, I would be able to acquire this thing that I really want to acquire or do this business deal that I really want to do. Um, so it's, it's just a matter of degree above that line. Um, because above that line, fundamentally, financially, you're okay. You're you're you you're figuring things out. And 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 being above that line means that you know, like like if you're struggling with something, if you've got some stuckness, if you're challenged with something, um, and you go, oh, maybe this is a spiritual problem. Well, then you can you know you can pay for someone like me. You can do the spiritual work, and you can work your way through the problems, or you can take a holiday, or you can get a new perspective, or because because the money that you need for, to be a part of the solution, you already have. Below that line, you really feel like you're screwed. Because everything that you need to get yourself out of the hole that you're in feels like needs money, and you don't have money. So, so how do you not just stay stuck in this place of not enough? Because friends, I mean, I suppose anybody listening to me talk would probably understand, would probably know that we are the creators of our reality. Each and every one of us. It appears as if we're we're sharing a world. It's actually an illusion. Uh, there are, you know, like eight billion worlds. We're each living in our own world of our own creation, and our world reflects us back to us. So, um, we are all wounded. All of us. We're all the walking wounded, and our and our and our wounds are reflected back to us. And I was interested to discover, listening to, you know, these various people who've appeared in my reality now who are struggling with finances. Uh, last night I had a dream in which I was really at the end of my tether financially, struggling with finances. So it's, it's in my reality. And I realize I've actually got a little bit of the poverty wound inside my energy body for me to work on. And so while I'm working on on that it's 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 fortunately in my life not really manifesting i'm i'm above that line um i'm 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 able to do the things that i need to do i always have what i need to to get to all the things i need i'm not a, by any stretch of the imagination a wealthy man but i'm 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 I, there's a different kind of wealth in my life i always have what i need to do the things that i need to do but still there's this pain in my being and I realize it's a like it's a multi-generational pain so we, we need to be working on this 
We need to be working on our pain and on our blockages. But how do we even get to that when, but what am I going to eat? Or, 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 you know, in a month's time, I'm going to be on the streets. Or my debt burden is so heavy, I feel like I'm drowning. So the thing is, the thing is, you have to change your energy. You have to change your focus. That's a kind of where it starts. So the first thing I'd recommend, like if, if, if I have a list of things to do to offer somebody who's struggling, the first thing I'd recommend is to go and do Adamu's Six Sacred Steps. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of um, the, the, the simplest of spiritual magic working that you can do. And the Six Sacred Steps really starts with acceptance. And I'm not going to rehash acceptance right now because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a single word that codes for so, so much. When we're not in acceptance, we're in victim. When you're in victim, you are creating victimhood. So you go round, excuse me, so you go round and round and round. You're stuck. You're stuck in victim and you're creating more victimhood. So acceptance, and, and Adamu speaks to acceptance and what to do and how to do acceptance in the six sacred steps. I suggest go and do the six sacred steps. What Adamu doesn't talk about in the six sacred steps and, 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 and has become apparent to me, the, the, the power and the magic of frequency of consciousness. Because everything, everywhere you're at is, is a frequency of consciousness. If you're stuck, if you're depressed, that's a frequency of consciousness. It's a low frequency of consciousness. Depression. It's like just stuck between life and death. You know, you, you don't even want to be here, but you, you, you know, you're still alive. You're still here. It's a miserable place. Um, and and, and um, when you're stuck there, you, you see the whole world through, through the lens of your frequency of consciousness. So that's another way in which you're just creating more and more of what you don't want. So raising the frequency of consciousness, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big topic. But what I can say is you can choose right now to find some joy, some pleasure, some sense of something good in where you're at. You, there's there's always something to be found. There's always you know a, a simple cup of tea. Um, something is beautiful. There's always something to be found. And the more time you can spend in raised frequency, the world mirrors you back at you. But mostly it mirrors your frequency of consciousness back at you. So. Some kind of pleasure, some kind of joy, some kind of appreciation, some kind of gratitude. These things are lifting your frequency of consciousness. And you're on your way up. And if you're on an upward spiral, that's where you want to be. Because otherwise, you're putting yourself on a downward spiral. And, and then there's nowhere to go but the basement. You know, this, this, okay. So raising your frequency of consciousness, I think, is, is, a, is very important. Much more important than you'd imagine. It's not just, you know, it's not just, it's not just happy feels. It, it really changes your world. Um, <clears throat> so, if you are in this kind of downward spiral and low frequency of consciousness, you're, you're, you're like a drowning man. Um, somebody must save you. And, and, and I, I don't know if you know anything about drowning people. If you aren't a fantastic swimmer who has had like, like, like life-saving training, you don't know what to do with a drowning person. You swim out to a drowning person, they grab onto you. They're in their desperation. They grab onto you and they drag you down. And now it's two drowning people. So, as I say, unless you are a lifesaver, you don't swim out to a drowning person. You like throw them something and hope they're okay. And if you are in a desperate situation, you're going to appear to people like a drowning man. Think about approaching someone, maybe, you know, maybe they've potentially have a job or, or, you know, an employment situation. And you just approach them with your need. 
you 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 you're just there with your naked need. I'm 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 in such a desperate place. Um. Why would they employ you? I, I, just go with me for a moment. Put yourself in their position. They've got a maybe. Maybe they have. Maybe they've got a position or uh, some employment that they can offer. There are many, many people always. There's always more people who want the job than, you know, than there are jobs. Why would they employ you? Because, because from their perspective, you're, you're on the downward spiral. You know, you're just, you just need. They don't know you. They don't know you from a bar of soap. They're not your brother, your uncle, your mother, your father. They're, they're somebody who doesn't know you. If all they see is your need, they go, oh, I think this person's problems. And so it's so sad. This is why it's a trap. It's why you get stuck in the trap. You know, it's why it's so difficult for somebody once you're homeless, once you're on the street to get a job because you you look like poverty you 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 know you're it's very difficult to stay clean it's very difficult to have clean clothes um you 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 know you don't have a nice place to stay you're not sleeping properly at night you're not arriving fresh to work you it's all just this person just sees problems and i would far rather employ somebody who's stable they will say they probably have a little of their own poverty wounding that they probably aren't even aware as they see you that gets triggered and they're, whoa, I don't need, I don't need this truckload of problems. Okay, so, so you need to put yourself a little bit in the position of others. Others are attracted to you. Others are switched on by you when you arrive with something to give, not with something to want, to need. You know, nobody's going to employ you because you need money. Nobody cares the fact that you need money. I can tell you right now, if, if their biggest concern in the world is helping people who need money, there's probably people out there who need it more than you do. And they probably have some, you know, something running to help those who really need money. You don't want to be in that position. You want to be in a position where somebody wants to employ you because they want you on their team because you're awesome. So this is why I say you start with six sacred steps and raising the frequency of your consciousness, because you've got to get to a place where you can say, what do I have? What light do I have to shine? What do I have to give? What do I have that's awesome? And then find people who want to be a part of what you have that's awesome because assuredly you have gifts to give but if 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 you're not thinking how can i help if you're thinking who can help me then then you are creating a kind of a repulsive force between yourself and the rest of the world because everybody's like whoa don't touch that that's problems there if you're thinking how can i help what do i have to give um, you are putting yourself in an abundance mindset. And there's, the universe operates on these kind of funny tricks um, because really, it, because the universe is reflecting you back at you. If, 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 if you're giving, if you're helping, if you're putting your energy out, if you're being positive with your life force, then the mirror of the universe reflects that back to you and it wants to give you some more back. And you're joyful, your mood is up, your energy is good, you're accepting where you are, you're working on what you've got, then you're on the upward spiral and life is going to reflect that back to you. Addendum. <laughs> After I pressed stop, I realized there's something more I want to say. You know, um, I was in a very difficult position um, some years ago, and 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 um, the thing that I have, that's I, I don't know, I suppose like my superpower, is 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 an ability to connect with spirit, to talk to my spirit guides, to talk to my divine self, and and in this stuck position. Um, I had a small pot of money and 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 many expenses many things to spend it on and it was shrinking very very fast 
and I couldn't see how there was going to get more in. And, and my divine self said to me, if you do the things that, that your soul calls you to do, if you are living your purpose, you will always have everything you need to live your purpose. And, and um, that seemed to me like a puzzle piece. That seemed to me like something important, like something I wanted to remember and, and live. Because, I, you know, I, I mean, is it true? Does it work like that? Well, how are you going to find out? So connecting with my heart, and this is a whole, also a whole long journey, like how do you connect with your heart? How do you connect with your truth? How do you connect with your divine guidance? But that is primary for me. It was, certainly. Connecting with my heart and finding out what it is that I'm really called to do. Because that's an entirely different conversation. Then what does my mind, my ego mind, do when it thinks I'm running out of money? This is, these are two very different things. How do I get money is an entirely different question than how do I do what I'm truly called to do? Now, if I think I must get money, then I'm in competition with everybody in the world that is, you know, below that line and a whole bunch of people that are above that line because, because, you know, that's what people think the game is about. You've got to get money. That's the illusion. And if you're thinking you're about getting money, you're going to be doing a very different set of things than if you think you're about serving the divine, doing what you are called to do, fulfilling your purpose. And if you're about fulfilling your purpose, the promise that was made to me, and I must believe it's true for everybody, I must believe it's true for you, that life will reward you Life will take care of you if you are doing what you are called to do, fulfilling your purpose. If you're about getting money, well, then you're just engaged in a competition with everybody else who's trying to do the same thing. And good luck with that. I don't think it's a happy place to be. So these aren't great solutions to the, you know, the, 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 the poverty situation of the world. Because the great solutions are... Each person has to figure out their own path. Each person has to find their own way. It's, it's going to be your, your lived journey. But the, the essence of what I'm saying is it's, it's about belief and it's about energy and it's about focus. And, 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 and if you're spiraling down, hitting rock bottom, then it's very, very hard for you to have these things be right. And this is really just my opportunity to take a few minutes to point out um, how you can shift the direction and how you can start trying to spiral upwards rather than spiraling downwards. I hope this is of use to you.